This is Russell Wright from ThemeZoom.com, returning after lunch to video number six, and my best buddy and business partner, Sue Bell, is here. She's not in the camera because she's the uh, slave driver around here at ThemeZoom Secret Lab. Otherwise known as the online semantic marketing dominatrix. <laughs> and uh, this video series that you're watching is actually uh, definitely an underground secret labs bordering on black hat powerful systems that we're actually showing. And we don't drink coffee, ever. No. Um, so this is a new format we're experimenting with. Um, you might want to watch all these videos in one sitting because it's no telling how long they'll be up, depending upon the response. Um, visit us at themezoom.com and you can get direct access to the application that we're showing you, which is the DWS Domain Web Studio SEO Project Management System. Uh, which is really a, kind of a, a project management system that sits on top of um, Kraken, which is our proprietary natural language processing technology, as well as the last keyword tool. Um, you can also integrate any other kind of link building technologies or any of the other myriad of huge number of SEO tools that are on the market in this centralized market research structure. To start today's talk, because we're about to jump into um, DWS again. I want to talk a little bit about the quadrants of ideas and words and the web in general. Sue and I have already moved on you know, a million light years forward uh, on the bleeding edge of technology where we're going as a company. What's already been done, we're going to be revealing a few videos and conversations that we've been having about that, including CIA level intelligence, uh, <laughs> natural language processing. As you know, Google has uh, teamed up with the Central Intelligence Agency uh, with a company that we have been very interested in for a while and are even more interested in now. We're watching a lot of the stuff that they're doing. Um, so let's move on to DWS. In our previous video, uh, we had a minor bug, which we sent over to Matt as part of the reason we took a break. And we've since then fixed that. <clears throat> so we're going to actually talk about the semantic web. And I'm going to let Sue begin this conversation. And I'm going to jump in when I'm inspired. It's important for you to know this because there's a difference between telling your story and formulating new ideas to be a dominant brand. Okay, in other words, a brand that has no competition. This is what I also uh, talk about as the Blue Ocean Strategy, which is a book that's available on Amazon, one of the better marketing and market research strategy books out there. In other words, when you understand where all the ideas are going on the web, not only in terms of keyword research, but in terms of semantic or mimetic plates, mimetic tectonic shifts, you can actually rule not only your online universe, but pretty much all the ideas offline in any market. So, Sue, so why don't we jump in and talk to them, since you found this thing online, why don't we talk to these guys about how this fits, even though we've already created a spiral version of this, we're borrowing this from... Um, from MetaWeb, basically. From MetaWeb, yeah. yeah. So let's jump into this and just kind of talk about how we view the, the different webs and where it, where it is now, you know, on this line of the grid right. and where it's going to the global brain right. in the upper right hand corner. If you could wrap this around a spiral, it would also map perfectly on, a di on spiral dynamics, right. which is my super favorite kind of uh, system of thought and algorithm of, you know, dealing with culture online. So let's take a look at it. Well, one of the things I find really fascinating about this graphic is down in the lower left hand corner where we start with the web, the original web, and it talks about connecting information. And we move from there into the bottom right where you've got the social web, which connects people. Key and point. where we're trying to go right now is to the semantic web, which connects knowledge. And then where the meta web is talking about going supersedes even that and connects intelligence. And I've been saying that the web is about relationships from the very beginning. It's all about relationships. It doesn't matter whether you're relating information to each other or people to each other or knowledge to each other. But the, the thing, my key word for the month is not just relationships now, it's context. Because what these more advanced references, the semantic web and what meta web is doing, is they're placing everything in a context. And that allows both people and machines to be able to understand what's actually being said on a web page. Right. And that allows conversations to be connected 
and for new, con new connections to be made by the individual person browsing the internet that they may not have made otherwise because you've got all of these software platforms that can access the ontologies that are available. Correct. And the thing that's really cool is, you know, MetaWeb, like actually the whole semantic web movement um, open source. open source ontologies. Exactly. And Sue and I have been talking about, you know, some of the things that we could do with the MetaWeb data, which is available through the API. And we're, we've been playing around with the algorithms that we've discovered at lunch that we've already had uh, early on, early 3.0 version. Some of you probably remember the long tail keyword research, which was really an early form of, of, of tangent theme, uh, right. tangent market theme right. analysis, which is really a mini baby, mini a mini me version of really where you know the CIA and Google has gone with the future technologies right. on a much more exactly. sort of huge entity based scale. Yeah, you know, so we can we can look at all that. What I'd like to add with what Sue said from the marketing to what Sue said from the marketing. And more importantly, the storytelling uh, position that I come from is that marketing is becoming very bourgeois and it will move more and more out of the front and center. The way that we think about marketing today, even in this, this section, because of, because of moving from the web to the social web to the semantic web, there's a whole value meme or a whole a value system with, in which culture is changing from one way of doing business and connecting relationships to from the, their lives to a product and into another way of doing it, which is, again, what you said, context-based. I would even go so far as to say that context is now king, not content. Right. Content, content still falls in the information and sometimes knowledge, but when you have all these copying, remember, a meme is a bit of cultural, a, a bit of culture that is copied or imitated via any medium, whether it's through a person speaking to another person, it's called word of mouth marketing, whether it's a document that's copied on the web, whether it's an entire book that's um, copied by Amazon and given a uh, digitized version and scraped and associated with relationships made through that. Anything that's copied in any way is a, is a meme machine. I uh, do recommend that you go to thingsinbookstore.com and, and purchase a copy of uh, Susan Blackmore's The Meme Machine. Um, other books that Sue has suggested are The Electric Meme, which is not bad. Um, these are very important breakthrough uh, concepts on a fraction or the beginning notions of the relationship web. Mm -hmm. Because relationships are about stories. Yeah. And as our friend David Bullock teaches us, relationship in the human brain is another uh, way of describing our ability to experience metaphor. And so a lot of the whole why-driven marketing right. that is replacing stuff-driven marketing is really about values. And those values are shifting because context is more of a choice than it is uh, a forced environment. And because you have uh, you know, Madison Avenue who you know, are competing for everybody's attention, uh, it's much harder for uh, cultural means to imprint a, a consumer or a customer through uh, by interrupting them. So the distinction problem for all marketers is becoming extreme to the point of distinction blindness uh, at, at, in every context, right. whether as we're talking about context. Context can be anything. Let's clarify what we mean to people. It can be when you're in downtown Madison Avenue looking up in Times Square at the giant freaking ad from Pioneer right. to um, this context right here where you've stumbled upon this video going, wow, it's free, how interesting, and they're not selling me a ton. And it's, a secret, it's a secret lab software development. You know, I've broken, we've broken through a lot of your defenses um, just by the fact that we're just giving value away and we're talking to you at an equal level. We're not forcing anything down your throat. That's an educational context. Right. right. Another context is to go, go to the blog right here. This is, a, this is a, a client that we are working on with Domain Web Studio. Here's another context. Here's a news blog site that's being submitted to Google News. You know, a web, my point here is not specific to this, but any blog, yours, mine, any website, is presenting a context. This flash presentation is part of the context in which the information is presented. Exactly. And every context has a is a, is telling a particular story by design. Right. I'm going to repeat this again because I didn't get it until literally this year. Every context is telling a story. 
intentionally or unintentionally by the design. Right. And the superior context is the superior meaning or portion of culture or subculture or counterculture that imprints your customer, your client, or whoever you're trying to communicate with, your team, your tribe, or your fans by the very context of the way it's presented to them. And as we move back into, let's go back over to this, as we move back into the, as we move up the spiral, the value mean spiral is again, check out spiral dynamics. This is one of the primary studies that I integrate into my marketing methods now as a consultant. As we move into the top levels, up all the way into the upper orange and, and blue sections, of, or uh, green section of spiral dynamics, we're going to actually be dealing with context primarily. You're going to want the context of your story to be unique and original. Right. So we're going to have a whole class and a whole video series on this. Absolutely, absolutely. Because the context, just to bring it back around to uh, ThemeZoom and the last keyword tool and DWS, as you look at your entire keyword DNA break, which is specific to you, it takes a keyword that a lot of people might be using and puts it in a very specific context. How it relates to those other keywords that you chose that specifically describe your product within the marketplace and how and the why that you present that product. Correct. In fact, to expand on this, let's go back to DWS. And what Sue is trying to say becomes very tangible and not such a sky piloting abstraction. If you think what we were saying right there with that presentation was sky piloting or creative or futuring or, or SOMA as we like to call it around here, you'd actually be very incorrect because we're on the verge of a major cultural online breakthrough in which the old methods are failing and clusters in the context of a new story or a better story what Sue and I are calling story dominance in your marketplace is not only a requirement but you've got to be able to do it to survive. Yeah. So what we're doing is like... Um, when we do our market research, we give them the project name, just double quotes for the moment. It's a long story. We're dealing with some programming issues. But our keyword ideas on market research, in order to tell a better story, the keywords that you come up with that make up the cluster in the, real, the green real estate market end up being your personal brand's context, which in this case is my client's uh, you know, green real estate investing news. Right. So we're going to go ahead and just start diving into the store that is being told online. And I will spend several days researching this. We're going to show you how to right. use this tool to come up with a superior meme plex or a, a superior cluster right. than anyone else out there. That's what we're going to be doing in the next several videos. Yeah. Okay. I think we have some time here, Sue. So I think it was worth the diversion to go into all that. I agree. This is a very high level stuff. Well, unfortunately, we only have about a minute and 30 seconds. So we're going to stop this. As soon as we come back, we're going to jump right into conversation monitoring storytelling, we're going to find out what the story is being told online around the keywords that our clients, your client thinks that they're interested in. We're going to match that up to the profile and the setup where we actually know what our financial goal is for the client, how we manage their expectations and what the click-through rate needs to be. We're going to go ahead and find a ton of keywords that are very appropriate and even uncover, you know, turn over some stones where there's hidden gold you know, within the conversation of the marketplace. We're going to bring it all back home to your own story, your own brand, and your own keywords in the next video. We'll see you in just a second.